We are anarchist activist sisters. Our goal is to have weed nuns in every city and town across the planet. Hi, I'm Jackie. This is the story of how I spent a week with weed nuns in the middle of California. And I only accepted 30% of the joints that were offered to me. I'm not an over-the-top weed enthusiast or anything, but I love meeting badass people committed to living life on their own terms. That's why I'm on my way to meet a woman known as Sister Kate. Sister Kate is the charismatic founder of Sisters of the Valley, a women-led business that crafts medicine out of cannabis. She started it in 2014, and by 2016, she was making $60,000 each month. Thing is, cannabis commerce is technically illegal in Merced County. Police cruise around and rip plants by the ton. We have to walk a very, very fine, clean line here. Pay every cent of taxes, no cash sales, and I know that if we would give them a reason, they would shut us down. Sister Kate is the most fascinating human being I've ever met in my entire life. She is such a kind-hearted person, but at the same time, kind of a gangster a little bit. She and her cannabis crusading activist sisters aren't quote unquote real nuns, and they don't claim to be. We are not at all patterned after Catholic nuns or the Catholic Church or affiliated in any way with a man-made or contemporary religion. We've patterned ourselves after the Beguines. The Beguines came before the first Catholic nun. They worked together, they prayed together, they dressed alike to identify their enclave, and they were hemp farmers. Just take what you need out of your purse and lock, uh, lock it up. Doesn't exactly complement your outfit. Sister Kate, Sister Cass, and Sister Freya are in Merced to pick up payment from their first wholesale client, a head shop downtown. So what am I gonna owe? You're gonna end up owing 129. 129, okay. Even though Sisters of the Valley makes medicine out of cannabis, the cannabis they grow is non-psychoactive. So the weed that they're growing isn't gonna get you high. It's not high in THC, but what it does have is CBD, the aspirin-like chemical compound that treats pain. And this should be everything that you asked for. All right, we can go buy some white blouses. Desiree, what about this one for making medicine? Oh yeah. The ones where we splash and and throw away. Sister Kate was born Christine Musin. Have a good Thank day. You. Thank you, have a nice day. Originally from Wisconsin, she lived for eight years in Amsterdam while working as a business consultant. And needless to say, she doesn't really fit in here. It's not her scene. Well, you have to understand, I worked in London, Stockholm, and in Denmark. And so I think that it's about as ugly and as crude as you can imagine, it's unfinished to me. The whole place is unfinished. But not everybody feels this way about Merced, California. I was born and raised here on a dairy, and I've seen this town grow up. Like anywhere else, we've got our problems. But we're a town of good people. It's always been kind of run down, a boring place to be, and a very poverty-stricken place to be. Uh, as a kid, I didn't know that there was anything else. If you've never been to the big breadbasket middle of California before, just know that it is strikingly different from the state's northern and southern parts. This is not the California with the beaches and the, the tech stuff. This is a place built on agriculture where 25% of the population lives in poverty. Violent gang activity here revolves around prostitution and drugs way less chill than weed. Law enforcement is reportedly overwhelmed, underpaid, and facing high turnover. Education rates lag way behind state averages, and there's just nothing for kids to do. That turns bored kids into criminals. Anybody who's smart teaches their children, keep your head down, don't talk to anybody here, go to school and get out. This is not a nice place. Cannabis commerce is changing that. Legalizing cannabis commerce would mean economic opportunity and hope for generations living in poverty and incarceration here in the Central Valley. California legalized medicinal marijuana quite some time ago, but there are still tons of local restrictions that have made it impossible for a cannabis industry to really thrive here. Plus, there's still plenty of people in jail for minor weed-related charges. On November 8th, 2016, the people of California changed that. Sort of. 
Proposition 64 amends the state criminal code to allow adults 21 and over to possess a personal amount of marijuana and to grow up to six mature plants at home. But this bill leaves a lot out. Despite widespread availability and growing acceptability, California residents still have to fight to frame marijuana as a medicine and a cash crop. It's not like we all wake up one morning and go, eh, nothing wrong with marijuana, let's make it legal. And it happens, in my opinion, at a grassroots level. It doesn't happen in the halls of Congress. It doesn't happen in the halls of city government or county government. It happens on the street level. It's really more a war between an over-controlling, abusive pharmaceutical and medical environment that's got our whole government rigged into it, the FDA and so forth. So it's, for us, it's an activist protest. It's we don't take pills, and this is our day-to-day -day medicine. I'm not a follower of the movement per se, but I do believe in civil liberties. I think that they should be free to live whatever life they choose to live, and that's why I feel so good about being out here. And come on in and have a seat over next to Sister Freya. We'll start with a little prayer. And I brought some sage over and I think I have a lighter. Okay, Mother God has put a blessing on these hands that work the medicine today. May these women keep connected with their ancient ancestors and with the medicine making work that they do together. Let them heal and carry the healing of the, and the power of this plant-based medicine on their mission to the people. Amen. I brought all the women together to show them how to trim. You can see I'm trying not to cut on the actual bud, but around the bud, but get all these sticks and all the hairs. And when we're done, this is what is considered dispensary quality. That's what we want, because when we take it in there, if it needs more trimming, the price drops. Most of these women have not been through a harvest, and we've got a significant CBD crop drying in our shop that needs to come in. Women have taken the brunt of all poverty in all countries. Anywhere you see poverty, women are suffering more from it than men. This order is about making honorable jobs for women. Our holy trinity is spiritualism, servitude, and activism. The servitude is our medicine making. And the activism is to change the laws so that they're more equitable for everyone. Sister Kate leads a revolving cast of workers that has grown steadily since 2014. This is Sister Anne. Can you tell me about how you started working here? Um, well, I was in Los Angeles and I was just tired of the city and the crazy life in there where you cannot really sleep because the helicopters and the sirens from the fire workers, the police, and it's just no peaceful sound of the birds, like right now. And, well, I came across Sister Kate on the internet and I liked the fact that she was working with medical marijuana. And I was impressed by the commentaries of the customers saying they were healed by the medicines. And I sent her a message. I came to visit and I like it. So I decided to move. It's fun. I like it. <laughs> what have you learned about the plant while you've been here? It's like a very intelligent plant that is totally connected with us, who can heal us better than our creator, God and Mother Nature. She knows the recipe. <laughs> Ow, 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 why, ow, ow. We'll up the concentrate, we'll double the concentrate. Okay. So that went from four ounces to eight ounces. And then these are the two strains that I think we should use for now. Vanilla Just for our first five. batch, and then I've got Sister Claire working on my calculator so I can do, so I can start to mix in some of these higher ones. This is all pure bud, yeah. so three ounces should be good. And then we're just going to up the concentrate, right? Yes, and we're doubling the concentrate. It's sort of an experimental batch to see what happens. Magic. Intuition magic. One of the sister's most popular products is the salve. Sister Kate gave me a jar, and it is, in fact, amazing. 
Here's how they make it. They melt a ton of coconut oil in crock pots. They have eight. We'll let that do its thing and be back in a second. All this weed, remember this weed? Has been dried, cured, and placed in this refrigerator. Sister Freya grinds it, measures it out, and stirs it in the oil along with essential oils like lavender and calendula. Then they package it up, let it solidify, and sell it online. They've got customers all over the world. Our customers are Republicans, Democrats, tall people, short people. Suffering is very democratic. Sister Anne and her seven-year-old son have been waiting weeks to move into their new apartment. The apartment manager is reluctant to rent to Sister Anne because she works with cannabis. I know it's difficult because you're a mom of teenagers and you don't want them to get into something that would disrupt them for sports and for what you want your kids to grow to. I absolutely understand how you feel and you don't have to worry because I have a son and I want the same for him. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. She's like, oh, you work with the Sisters of the Valley? And she's like, I don't like um, people that smoke weed, you know? And she's like, I don't like weed. Sister Kate had to get involved to secure Anne's housing. At this point, she's used to convincing people that her workers aren't up to anything fishy, and she has plenty of documentation to prove it. I also wanted to let you know that um, the precedent has already been set in courts in California. The landlord cannot be responsible. You don't have to worry about it with Sister Ann because she doesn't smoke anyway. She just came here to work in the business. My point is you, there, we wouldn't want dream of putting you at risk. And if you ever look at our website, which is sistersofthevalley.org, you can see that we ship our products all around the world, and we would not be able to do that. We use the post office and we use regular banking systems. And I will provide the report from the Sheriff's Department as well as the permits that I do have if that will satisfy you. Okay. Okay, well, then she's going to be bringing those to you this afternoon. Thank you. Sister Anne's struggle is just one example of how weed is still vilified and misunderstood by many. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. Long before Jesus Christ was even a dude, people have been using cannabis to treat many, many ailments, including addiction recovery, anxiety, chronic pain, seizures. I could go on. This should serve to prove that it is medicine, and that's what Sister Kate is really out to convince people of. We're sort of asking the whole world, all the women, to participate in just growing the non-psychoactive cannabis and daring the law to shut us down. We all come from the goddess, and to her we shall return like a drop of rain flowing to the ocean. Mother Gaia, bless the people that work the land Restore them now, give them rest and peace, as they've all worked very, very hard to make this happen, to bring the crop in, and to toil over the plants in a sacred manner, and to follow the principles of the sisterhood. It's not easy being an outsider in a small town, and it's certainly not easy to organize for social change and then turn that into legislation. But it's worth it. Sister Kate is changing the way that people think about cannabis, and I couldn't be more high. I mean, proud. <laughs> now we want to know what you think. Let us know below in the comments, and if you like this video and you want to see more, hit subscribe.